watching NWCN, Northwest Extra. Could Western Washington's orcas be listed as endangered after all? Today, a federal judge sends the National Marine Fisheries Service back to the drawing board to determine whether local orcas should be put on that list. Ahead tonight, the fight that led to that decision, and we'll talk to an environmentalist expert on what is next. But first, more on what today's decision means. And Cam, this is a big boost for environmentalists. Greg, for people who love whales, this is huge. And basically, this helps clear the way for more vigorous federal protection of the so-called southern resident orcas living in the Puget Sound. King 5's Glenn Farley has the details. Local whales have been dying out at an alarming rate for the better part of a decade, down 20% since the mid-90s, prompting the National Marine Fisheries Service to look into whether the orca should be placed on the endangered species list. And their conclusion just a year ago was no, because while the local population could well die out, there were other orcas in the world. The population did not meet that definition. So is it technical? Yes. Is it essential? Yes. You've got to meet that legal requirement in order to invoke the act. Environmental groups were outraged and sued. And today, federal district judge Robert Lasnik ordered the fishery service to issue new findings in the next 12 months. It's a holiday season and the orca's just got a great gift. The issue is over whether there's just one species of orca or actually several. The local JK and L pods the environmentalists want to protect eat salmon. Other seagoing orcas eat other marine mammals. They don't socialize, they don't interbreed. Can you realize how Former Secretary of State Ralph Monroe has been fighting for the orcas ever since they were captured for aquariums. The fact of the matter is we have these magnificent creatures in our waters who have lived here for thousands of years. And it's our responsibility and our job to protect them. An endangered species listing does come with implications. Certain critical areas could be set aside. There could be protections on salmon, the orca's food supply. Some salmon are classified as endangered species themselves, already requiring developers and logging companies to change the way they do business. And the fishery service says it has an orca conservation plan in place under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. And environmentalists say the whales can only be truly protected when these largest members of the dolphin family are considered endangered. In Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Well, here's some little known history that shaped everything. In the mid 1700s, a Swedish botanist classified the orca as one global species. Back then, scientists didn't know that some killer whales migrated throughout a large range, while others stuck to smaller areas. The Puget Sound whales include three pods of orcas and about 84 individual whales. That's down from more than 120 in the 1960s. Greg? All right, Campbell, joining us now is Michael Harris with the Orca Conservancy. And you said this is not something you quite expected, so this has got to be huge for you. Hey, it's a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it's, uh, we're very, very happy with this. What did you expect leading up to today? Well, you know, in this climate, it's, it's the last three years on this battle, it's been really rough waters out there, especially during this uh, administration, who is very hostile toward the ESA protection. So we didn't quite expect to have such a, a victory, and, and this is great. I, this is really good news. And this is by no means a done deal. Where do we go from right. here? Right. Well, you know, what the judge said today is that you didn't do your job right. Go back and do it again. The, their duty is to use the best available science to come to a determination about whether these orcas warrant ESA protection. And they use, like you mentioned, uh, a, a classification from 1758. So, you know, we're, we're going off science. We're beginning with science that's 300 years old, and we've learned so much about these orcas in the last 30 years. In the last three years, we've learned a lot about right. these orcas. So it's not the best available science. Is this kind of a wait and see thing? Or are you pretty sure that they will end up on the endangered species list. I think what, what happened today is the judge said every criteria that you use to say that they do not warrant ESA protection, he basically threw it out the window. So uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to come back now and find new reasons not to list these orcas. So we think what this means is they're going to have to list these orcas sooner or later, and uh, we hope it's sooner. Let's talk about how this would affect, if they are put on the list, how would it affect other industries, say the tourism industry with cruise ships, uh, shipping lines, whale watching? Right. Well, you know, as far as the whale watching goes, the whale watch operators in Washington State are, we think they're awesome. We think they're doing a great job. They're mm -hmm. some of the best self-regulated industry out there because I think they know that they are stakeholders. Right. You can't watch whales if there are no whales to watch. 
So I think they've been very good. I don't think the ESA is going to make any difference to them more so than what the current what route done themselves. Okay. would be. So I, I think the whale watching will not be affected. What it will affect is how do we protect the habitat? You can't just protect the orcas by looking at them like a stock of fish. You have to look at a broad habitat. You have to look at mitigating and preventing oil spills, which are the number one threat to these orcas right now. So it provides teeth, basically, in the protection. It's the best measure of protection and recovery for these orcas. So we'd be talking about more money either for prevention or for acting quickly if there were an oil spill. Yeah, well, that's one of the things. Yeah, it just means a, a consideration of things like oil spills. Um, and and it, again, I mean, the depleted stock through the Marine Mammal Protection Act is a step in the right direction, but it's not a big enough step. You know, we need the teeth that ESA brings. And I think really the regional NOAA Fisheries Office, I think they believe too that we need to list these orcas. I'd like to believe that. I think they've just been buffaloed by the Bush administration in Washington, D.C. on this one. I feel pretty confident that this is going to go ahead. I mean, what's, what's the time yeah. frame are we looking at here? Well, they, months or years? They've been given 12 months to go back to the drawing board, figure out, come back with a better argument on why they shouldn't mm -hmm. list. And I think with everything now thrown out by this judge, it's going to be very tough for them to come back and say, you know, this 1758 taxonomy is actually the best available science. Um, I don't think they're going to wiggle out of this. I think they know what, what the right thing is to do. And, uh, and uh, I think ultimately we're going to get ESA protection for these orcas. And I think that's a great victory for orcas. What would this region be without killer whales? It's a, it's what would like the economy be? You look be? at the Space Needle, it says Seattle, orca uh, say exactly. the Puget Sound. Yeah, so. what would this economy be without these orcas? That's you know, I, And so this is not just a, a whale hugger issue or an animal rights issue. This is an economic issue. This is why people live here. The killer whales of Puget Sound are why, in large part, why people are here. Even if you don't see them every day, you know they're out there. What's it going to be like if you, look, if you look out there and you realize they're not out there? They're a big part of the Northwest. Exactly. Michael Harris with the Orca Conservancy. Thank you very much for coming in. My pleasure. Appreciate it. And uh, we contacted the National Marine Fisheries Service today to give them an opportunity to comment. They declined to talk with us. Here are some interesting facts about orcas that you might not know. Females can live to be about 80 years old. Males live to be about 60. And orcas' food pre uh, preference pretty much varies depending on their locality. They eat everything from seals to sea lions to walruses, even other whales. Of course, they eat salmon. Orcas also rely very much on the sound to communicate. They make a variety, variety of different sounds, including calls, whistles, and those funny little clicking noises. And each pod has its very own distinct call.